Hey guys, before I start this video, I want to say a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all those out there watching. Um, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all the people that have subscribed, commented, good or bad, on my videos throughout the year. But uh, I want to take this time to go through the year and look at some, look back at some of the projects that we've worked on and some of the things that we've done. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I thought it would be cool to go over some of the vehicles that we have worked on over the year. So um, going back to January of 2018 and running through the end of the year, I thought it'd be cool to look back on some of the things that we've done to these cars. And uh, then at the end of the video, I'd like to talk about some of the things I want to do going into the new year or as far as some of the projects that I want to get done next year. Whether they get done or not, we'll have to see. But anyway, let's start off with the Tahoe. So I generally like to keep my wife in a four-wheel drive vehicle in the wintertime, and so I bought this Tahoe late 2017, and uh, of course this is what it looked like. Now we didn't do a lot to that thing, but we did lower it, and we tinted the windows all the way around, took off the roof rack, did some paint correction, and ultimately it ended up looking like this. As you can see, it looks a lot better uh, when I finished with it, opposed to when I started. But we did sell that, and uh, so that brings us on to the next car that I purchased, which was my 2017 GMC pickup. So as you can see from that picture, that truck was, um, I mean, it looked like a basically stock truck. And uh, it, I knew what I was going to do when, with it when I bought it. But um, let's take a look at some of the things that we did to it. Today, we're going to take the badges off my brand new Sierra pickup truck. My 2017 Sierra is now dropped. Today, I'm doing an update on my Sierra pickup. The last video I talked about, I said, the next time you see this truck, it's going to have wheels and it's going to be tinted. So let's see what I did. So you're starting to see a pattern here, um, lowered tinted windows, um, that I kind of do the same thing to every car, but to me they look better. Now I did add wheels to that truck and uh, those, those dub baller wheels did look good. They were a pain to clean, but they did look good. Now I will say if some people have not been watching or keeping up with my channel, I also sold that truck. So um, I am on the hunt for a new truck, but that truck is sold. And uh, well, let's let's move on to the next thing. One of the one of the important parts of the garage that I did this last year. So the lift, um, absolutely love this thing. It gives me so many options as far as working on cars. It gives me the ability to park an additional car in a two car garage. And this year, I do want to make a video on um, kind of the size of my garage how big the lift is and um, talk about ceiling height and all that. So look for that video that will be coming up. But this is a very intricate part of working on cars. It makes it way easier to do oil changes, just oil changes. It's worth it for that. But uh, it did require some stuff and I'll show you some clips of a few other things that we had to do. So here's what it looks like all finished up. Um, the two that I had here prior um, I had this first one on the other wall, and then I added the four that I showed you at the beginning. One of the garage door um, rails moved closer to the ceiling. So I had a guy come out um, that does garage doors, and normally my garage door rolled up about to the seven foot mark, so just right above the cabinets there. And uh, that really wasn't where I wanted it. It had a center mount garage door opener. I wanted it to roll as close to the ceiling as possible. I have an 11 foot ceiling in my garage, so I wanted um, obviously it closer to the ceiling when it came up. So he did that and uh, did a great job. He also added a jack shaft opener is add this four post lift. So needed to get the garage door opener up to close to the ceiling as possible. And so as you can see, I did a couple other things with the, when I added the lift, I added some cabinets 
uh, around the around the garage anyway. I did have to lift the garage door up. The garage door had to be moved up, and, and it didn't really have to be, but I wouldn't have been able to put a car on and then open the garage door at the same time. So really something that I wanted. I wanted to be able to open the garage without it hitting the car that's on the lift. So had to add a couple things, but let's move on to the top replacement on the Trans Am. So obviously one of my biggest gripes on this Trans Am when I purchased it was the top and the bubbles. So uh, if you guys are familiar with the F-Body platform from like 90, late 98 all the way through the end of the, of the run of the vehicles, they had an issue with the glue seeping through the top and causing the bubbles. So it pops the paint. You can't just sand it down and paint it. The only way to fix it is to replace the top. And so that's what we did this year. Um, I skinned the top off of a 96 model, which did not have that problem. And uh, well, I'll show you a couple clips here. In past videos, I've talked about how I vinyl wrapped it. So as you can see, the top looks a thousand times better. And that was really my, the only like eyesore when you looked at this car. I mean, it's got a few nicks here and there, but that top, man, it just stood out and it was terrible. Like if you watch some of my past videos before that, when I replaced it, I tried to cover it. I tried to wrap it and uh, it just nothing fixed it other than just replacing the top. So um, we got that done this year anyway. Uh, now we're going to move on to... Well, we purchased another vehicle after we sold my wife's Tahoe, and that is a CTSV that you see down here behind me. So when we first purchased this car, I had a lot of plans for it, and um, it's a great car, don't get me wrong, but I will say that this year I'm probably going to sell this car. I know that um, some of you may watch and, and like some of the stuff that we've done to it. We really haven't done a whole lot, kind of like the truck tinted, lowered, and I did buy a couple other things for it, but I haven't posted videos on that because I'm not really sure, like I said, if I'm going to keep it. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to sell it to move on to something else, and uh, well, you know, like I said, it is a great car, but we did a few things, and I'll show you a couple clips here. Front's at three quarters of an inch down, the back's about a half inch down, and the kit says it's going to be one inch and about three quarters of an inch in the back, so I still think it's going to settle some more. So as you can see, we did have a lot of fun with this car. We did take it to the track completely stock. And I think the best time it ran, I think, was at 12.39. So I didn't get a time slip as far as um, what the trap speed was. I don't think I did anyway. But it, nonetheless, this car has been a lot of fun. And we may keep it, but chances are it's probably going to get sold. And, uh, well, let's move on to the Trans Am. So, um, you know, we replaced the top. And uh, I wanted to do some performance things to the Trans Am. I took it to the track completely stock, 100% stock. Spare tire in the back, full weight, everything just as it came, paper filter, and it ran a 1342. So um, we did quite a few things to the Trans Am this year, and let's take a look at a couple things that we've done. What we're going to do is we're going to start out uh, in this video showing you how to install uh, underdrive pulley. So a Torque Thrust 2, so it's a polished Torque Thrust 2, 17 by 9.5 in the front, 17 by 11 for the rear. I bought a kit from, it's the one kick or one click brake kit from PowerStop, and it comes with rotors, it comes with calipers, everything you need to do what you need to do.
as you can see, brakes, uh, headers twice, two times we did headers on this car. Um, we added, uh, what else did we add? I added a Canon filter in the lid and stuff. I didn't show you guys that because that's pretty easy bolt-on stuff. Added a couple suspension parts that we added. And then we took it back to the track and uh, I was kind of disappointed. It was pulling timing and uh, so I did a couple other things to fix that heating issue. But um, we will be taking it back to the track tuned. And there's a reason why it's on the lift, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. But um, now let's move on to the 2004 GMC pickup that I purchased. Now, when I bought this truck, it looked like it came straight off of an old man because it was terrible looking. Let's take a look at what it looked like when I first purchased it. Now, the whole reason I purchased that truck was to drive through the winter months, and, uh, well, I just couldn't stand the look of it. It was just driving me crazy, and you know I can't leave anything alone. So, uh, here's a couple things that I did to it. Today, we're going to be working on the Sierra pickup truck yet again. As you can see, when I finished up, it did look a heck of a lot better, or at least I thought it looked better, and it is sold now. So uh, a few weeks ago, I listed it up for sale, just kind of trying to feel out um, if, you know, what was out there and if maybe it would sell. So actually, I listed it, and like three days after I listed it, it sold. So that truck is now gone. So I am to the Buick full-time. So if you guys watch my Buick oil change video, my Lucerne is what I'm driving full-time right now. So that's obviously going to have to change, but we're going to move on. Uh, the next thing that we got finished this year was the E85 swap on the Corvette. So let's take a look at a few clips on the Corvette. Today, I'm going to show you a couple things on my ZR1. So unfortunately, you can't reach that without pulling the fender off. Once you have the fender back bolted up, like I said, it's just a reverse process. One of the hardest things to get to is that one that's in the center here. Uh, what I did was I used a magnet in order to hold it in place. The other thing is make sure that your clip's in place. Mine had fallen out, so I had to take everything back apart. The inner fender's all back together. I went ahead and put the wheel back on, getting ready to set it back down and torque the wheel to 100 foot-pounds. And we're complete with this section. Now, I don't expect these wheels and tires to fix my traction issue completely, but hopefully what it will do is make it a little safer to drive. Right now it gets no traction in third and fourth gear. Hopefully I can at least get that. So with that 85 swap, I also did an additional pump on that car. And uh, well, you know, I've, I don't drive it as much as I should. Uh, and maybe I'm going to sell it. I don't know. I, I probably won't. I've, I've toyed around. I did list it for sale once or twice, and uh, I just it seems like I just can't break free of having this car. But uh, I did get to rip on it a little bit this year. I'll show you a couple clips here. This car is a ton of fun to drive, and I think that's why I keep going back and forth. Part of me wishes that I would have just left it alone, maybe left it stock, because uh, it is a handful with the six-speed and the power that it's making now. And why I thought I needed to do all that stuff, I have no idea. But regardless, it is complete. So, um, I, like I said, I don't know whether I'll sell it or not, but chances are I probably won't. I keep saying that I'm going to, but I won't. But, uh, well, let's move on to the next thing that we worked on, and that is my Slam 52 pickup.
Now, I absolutely love this truck. Um, I can promise you this, this truck will be on the channel forever. I will not sell this truck unless somebody made me like a $100,000 offer, then that would be stupid not to buy, not to sell it and buy another one and just do this all over again. But uh, if I had to sell it all and drive one vehicle every day, that old truck would be the truck that I would keep forever. I just love that thing. And uh, well, let's take a look at a couple things that we did to that this year. Today we're gonna be working on the stereo and the 52. If once we get the seat out, you can see this is my kind of amp rack that I had made. Today we are going on a rod run and I brought my wife with me. Hi. And one of my sons is here, just a little guy and he's sleeping. My other son is right there, he's with my neighbor. And uh, we're gonna walk around and take a look at what kind of cars are here. As you can see, we took it on that drive, fixed the amplifier, which actually wasn't the amplifier, it was a ground, but um, that truck, it, we just love that thing. We drive it in the summertime to car events, cruise in, stuff like that. And um, well, let's move on to the very last thing I wanna talk about this year, and that is the purchase of the 2017 GMC Denali. <laughs> Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, when we were talking about the Tahoe, I like to keep my wife in a four wheel drive vehicle over the winter time. Um, you know, we don't get a ton of winter here, but if we do, I like her to be safe and our kids to be safe driving around. And when we sold the black Tahoe is when we purchased the CTSV. And now we have purchased the Denali and um, we really haven't done anything to it yet. It, um, it's been too cold and I just haven't had time to do the lowering kit. Now I did buy a lowering kit and you will see a video a how to on doing that um, or lowering the Unicon or the Denali, the newer body style, because it's pretty much the same, but if there's any differences, you're gonna see in that video. But guys, next I wanna talk about kind of what my plans are for the new year. Now, I'm not really one to plan out my whole year or talk about, um, oh, I'm 100% going to do this and I'm 100% going to do that. But one thing I can tell you without a doubt 100% is the Trans Am is going to come apart. Now, I'm going to be doing a few things to make it a little faster this year. Um, and you're just going to have to stay tuned to see what those things are. But there is a reason it is sitting on the lift behind me. It is getting ready to start. And uh, of course, I'm going to post kind of um, section by section videos because it's going to be uh, several things that I'm going to be doing to it. And uh, I want to post maybe a video each week on the car. Hopefully I can get that done. It's, it's really hard to post two videos a week, but I'm going to try to keep posting at least two videos a week. And I'm going to try to include the Trans Am on at least one of those videos each week. If not, I will for sure have one every other week. But uh, aside from the Trans Am project, a couple other things I would like to do is obviously like we just talked about, I'm going to be lowering the Yukon. Um, not a whole lot really I'm going to do other than lower the Yukon. Uh, maybe some wheels down the road. I'm not even sure. So a, lot, a lot of times things come and go so fast here that um, I just really don't get time. Somebody either offers to buy it or I sell it because I found something else I want. But I can tell you for sure that I will be buying another truck this year. And I haven't really decided. Um, I went back and forth on since I sold my green truck, I sold the white truck. I really want another crew cab. When I initially sold the 2017, the crew cab, um, I was looking at a 19, like the new body style, but there's no lowering kit out yet. And I refuse to buy one until I can lower it because it's going to look stupid driving around at stock height. And I just absolutely hate the look of that. So um, other than that, guys, I think that we'll probably do a few cruise ins, maybe hit a couple uh, streetcar takeovers this year. I'd like to take the Corvette out if I don't sell it, which I probably won't. But uh, if I don't sell it, I would like to take it out to a couple events, maybe do some roll racing with it. I don't. I would like to do a clutch this year on this car, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to do that. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, it is a huge undertaking, so uh, probably not something I'm going to do. But if I have to, you know, we're, we're going to do it. So uh, 
Other than that, guys, there will probably be two or three other projects that slide in and out through this year. And uh, I don't know what those are yet because I haven't found a picture of something that I just dying to have on the internet. That's generally how my projects go. I find something that I just don't think I can live without. I buy it, sell something else, then sell it. It's just a reoccurring process that just continually happens. So hopefully you like this video, guys. I know it's a little bit different than what I normally do, but I wanted to take you through some of the stuff that we've done this year and some of the fun that we've had. And uh, hopefully you do like it. If you do, smash that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, go down and hit the subscribe because we got lots of stuff planned. We're going to work on the Trans Am, the Corvette, who knows? Maybe we keep the CTSV and do a bunch of stuff to it. I have no idea. But, uh, well, you're going to have to stay tuned to see what happens next. <laughs>